Hello and welcome to this video on finding the inverse of a matrix. So in previous videos in this series, we've seen that we can add, subtract and multiply matrices, but we've not really mentioned division. Where matrices are concerned, we're not really allowed to divide with matrices as we would normally expect. But we can use something called the inverse of a matrix to produce a result that's equivalent to division. To illustrate this, let, let's consider first of all the reciprocal of a term, such as x would be 1 over x, or x to the minus 1. And so the reciprocal of 4 would be 1 over 4, or 4 to the minus 1, and so forth. So we can apply exactly the same principle to matrices, and we call this the inverse if we have a matrix A, then its inverse is A to the minus 1. We don't write 1 over A because that would be dividing by A, and we're not really allowed to do that, but we are allowed to express the inverse in the form that we've seen to the minus 1 here. So if we're able to find the inverse of a matrix, then we can perform an operation that's kind of like division. We're not allowed to divide two matrices. Let's suppose we have a matrix called A, and a matrix called B. We're not allowed to say A divided by B, but we are allowed to multiply a matrix by its inverse, let's say A times B to the minus 1. So as an analogy, suppose that 6 divided by 3 is the same as 6 times 1 over 3, or 6 times 3 to the minus 1. We're going to apply this exact same idea to matrices in just a moment. Last thing to mention before we begin is it's important to note that not all matrices have an inverse. The matrix must be a square matrix, 2 by 2, 3 by 3, or so forth. The matrix must have a determinant that is not zero. We talked about determinants in a previous video in this series. So let's start by trying to calculate the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Before we do that though, let's have a look at this formula here where we say that x times x to the minus 1 equals 1. Now this doesn't strike us as immediately relevant to begin with, but this applies to any value of x. If we multiply whatever value x happens to be by x to the minus 1, we'll always get an answer of 1. We're going to apply this same idea to matrices, and we're going to say this. A times A to the minus 1. A could be any square matrix. We get an answer of I. And I is something that we call the identity matrix, or the unit matrix. The identity matrix is a matrix where the diagonal values from top left to bottom right are all 1 and all of the other values are zero. It's kind of like the closest thing we have to the number one in the matrix form. So here we see a two by two identity matrix and a three by three identity matrix. So what we're saying here, going back to this formula above, is that when we multiply a matrix by its inverse, we'll always get an identity matrix as the result. One other point to make is we see that whenever we multiply a matrix, let's call the matrix A for now, whenever we multiply a matrix by the identity matrix I, we always get the original matrix as a result. And that makes sense thinking of I, the identity matrix, as being like the number 1 in a sense. When we multiply something by 1, it doesn't change the result. And we see that in the matrix form as well. So let's put this idea into practice with an example, and let's consider this 2 by 2 matrix here. Um, we'll call it A again, but we suppose that we have this matrix made up of the elements 6, 4, 3, and 5. Now what we can say, using this formula that we saw on the previous section, A multiplied by the inverse of A equals the identity matrix, we can lay this out like so. And we see here we have our original matrix, and we're multiplying it 
using this dot as convention uh, for mat matrix multiplication. We're multiplying it by the inverse matrix. Now we don't know what the inverse matrix is yet, and so I've just left this with placeholder terms A, B, C, and D for now. And it's equal to I, the identity matrix, and we've seen the two by two identity matrix in a previous slide as well. So what we can do is recalling our idea of the dot product that we saw in our previous video. Again, if you haven't seen our previous video on matrix multiplication, it's worth going back to that. But we can say that the elements in this um, resulting identity matrix are made up of the dot product of the columns and rows from our matrices that we're multiplying together. So the first element here in the top left uses the row, the first row from our first matrix and the first column from our second matrix and the dot product of those will look something like this. And what we can do is we can use the same principle of using the dot product to generate four equations um, like so. Again, if you're not familiar with the dot product or where these equations have come from, then it's worth revisiting one of the previous videos in this series uh, where, where we go into that in more detail. But at this point, we notice that we have a pair of equations that are in terms of A and C. And we also have a pair of equations that are in terms of B and D. So some rearrangement and substitution allows us to find these missing terms. So for example, we see that 3a plus 5c equals 0. So we can say that 3a equals minus 5c. And doubling this gives us 6a minus 10c. Substituting this into the other equation we have that's in terms of a and c, here we see 6a plus 4c equals 1. We can find that 6a can be replaced with minus 10c. And so now we have minus 10c plus 4c equals 1, which means that minus 6c equals 1, which means that c equals minus 1 over 6 if we divide both sides by minus 6. Knowing this and substituting this into one of our other equations involving a and c, we can find that a is equal to 5 over 18. For the other pair of equations um, involving uh, b and d, we'll take a similar approach. So since 6b plus 4d equals 0, we can rearrange to say that 6b equals minus 4d. Halving this gives 3b minus 2d. And the reason I've done that is because you'll notice that our other equation involving b and d um, is 3b plus 5d. So we can replace the 3b now. We know that 3b is equal to minus 2d. And substituting that, we have now minus 2d plus 5d equals 1. And that means that 3d equals 1, and d must therefore equal 1 over 3, or a third. And again, knowing that, we can substitute that into either of the equations uh, in terms of b and d, and, and rearrange to find that b is equal to minus 2 over 9. So now we've found these unknown values a, b, c, and d. And remember that these values were the placeholder values for our inverse matrix. So we've actually found, by putting these back into matrix form, our inverse matrix, um, a to the minus 1, is represented as shown. So let's see a quick application of where we might apply this inverse matrix. Uh, we've just calculated the inverse of a matrix called A, but let's suppose we have another matrix we'll call B, 
uh, made up by these elements 3, 6, 8 and 2. And suppose we wish to divide B uh, over A, for example. Now, this isn't allowed, as we said before. We're not really allowed to divide matrices. But what we can say is B multiplied by the inverse of A, which gives us kind of an equivalent result. Let's do that using the same um, method of matrix multiplication that we saw in a previous video. So we'd write uh, something that looks like this. And by writing out in full, um, we can represent that as something like so. And when we work out our results, um, we find our matrix can be represented by these elements uh, minus 1 over 6, 4 over 3, 17 over 9, and minus 10 over 9. And that's fine as, as left in um, terms of rational numbers there in fractional form, but you could um, convert those, convert those to, to decimals as well, um, which would look something like this. Zero, uh, minus 0 0.16 recurring, 1.3 recurring, 1.8 recurring, and 1.1 recurring. Let's have a look at a more complicated example now and let's suppose we wish to find the inverse of this 3 by 3 matrix now. Uh, again we'll just call it A but it's now a 3 by 3 matrix and a slightly more complicated approach is required when we're working out the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix. And we're going to refer to this formula below. Um, we see here the inverse of our matrix A is equal to something called the adjoint of A over the determinant of A. We'll talk a bit about what the adjoint means in just a second. The determinant we've mentioned in a previous video and we enclose it in these modulus bars to make it clear that it's the determinant. When it comes to the adjoint of a matrix, we're going to find this by following three steps. We're going to form a new matrix, let's call it B, using what we call the cofactors of A. Second, we're going to transpose the matrix and we're going to call the transposition of this matrix uh, B with a subscript T to remind us that it's been transposed. And finally, the matrix BT is what we call the adjoint of A. Now I appreciate those three steps don't make much sense at the minute but we're going to go through an example and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. So referring back to our matrix A which we've still got here we're going to form a new matrix which we're going to call B um, using something called the cofactors of A. And so what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm just going to set up this matrix B and again just give it some placeholder terms um, A through I for now. So first of all how do we find the value of the cofactors? Well we've actually encountered cofactors before if we've been following our series of videos here and we encountered them when we were uh, calculating the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. The cofactor of the matrix is the result of the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix that remains when we remove all of the other terms in the same row or the same column as the element that we want to find. So let's suppose that we want to find the um, the term A, for example, in our new matrix B. What we're going to do is, referring back to our um, original matrix A, we see that um, A is the first, the, uh, first term in the, in the first column in the first row. And so what I'm going to do is ignore all the terms in the first row and the first column. And we're left with this square matrix of 8, 1, 5, and 2. And so what we can say is that the cofactor for A 
in our new matrix is made up of the determinant of these four terms. And hopefully we know how to work out the determinant of a two by two matrix now. It's these uh, diagonal terms, um, top left, bottom right, multiplied together, minus the other diagonal, um, bottom left to top right, multiplied together. And so we see something like this, eight times two, minus one times five, and that comes to 11. And so we can use this same method for calculating all of the cool factors. Let's look at one more example. Let's pick on D in our new uh, matrix B. And referring to um, our original matrix uh, A, we see that D is in the second row and the first column. And so we're going to ignore the second row. We're going to ignore the first column. We're left with the elements 2, 7, 5, and 2. And so D will be the determinant of those four elements in a 2 by 2 matrix. And again, we can express that as 2 by 2 minus 5 times 7. Uh, that comes to minus 31. So we repeat this first of all for all the cofactors. I've just picked on two there, uh, A and D. But we repeat this for all of them. And we're going to put these all into our matrix B. But the one thing to bear in mind is that we must put these in a pattern um, that is represented below, where some of our terms are going to be inverted. And so the non-inverted terms, um, I've just represented them with a plus. And these numbers can just be put in as we calculate them. The minus symbols here represent that our terms must be inverted. And we've got to be careful here because some of our terms might already be negative. Let's look at that term D again. We calculated D to be minus 31. And so looking at the location of D, where it's going to fall in our matrix, you'll see that D is going to be inverted. Now, just beware that D was already a negative number. But when we invert the sign of a negative, the negative is going to become a positive. So even though we've calculated D to be minus 31, when we actually put it into our uh, matrix here, it's going to be plus 31 or, or 31. So be aware when handling positive and negative signs in your work when you're doing this by hand, because unfortunately, a very small error just to getting one of these minus signs or a minus a minus and so forth just a small mistake like that can lead to the incorrect result and it's often very difficult to find where you've gone wrong after the fact so we're going to skip some of the working here because the final result will look something like this and if you want you can pause this video and work through all of the cool factors yourself to make sure that you get the same result, but just for the purposes of moving along, we'll, we'll skip um, most of the steps here because they're all using the same idea. But I want to return back to the three steps that we talked about at the start. We looked at the first step, which was to form this new matrix B using the cool factors of A. Well, we've done that now. The second step is to transpose the matrix and we call the matrix B originally, and when we transpose it, we're going to call it B subscript T. Now, luckily, transposing a matrix is very easy. All we mean when we transpose a matrix is that all of the rows become columns, and all of the columns become rows. So our transpose matrix will look something like this. So notice that in our original matrix, the first column was 11, 31, and minus 54. And so this is now the first row in our um, transposed matrix BT um, going along um, horizontally. Finally, looking back at step three, we said that BT is equal to the adjoint 
of matrix A, and it's often written like this, A, D, J, for the adjoint, the adjoint of A. And so step three, really, we've already done. We're just calling it something different. So looking back at our original formulation for the inverse of a matrix, we said that the inverse of this three by three matrix is equal to the adjoint of A divided by the determinant of A. And we've now found the adjoint of A um, in the previous section there. And on the bottom of this fraction is the determinant of A, which we write with these modulus bars. And we're allowed to divide by the determinant. We've said in previous sections that we're not really allowed to divide matrices by other matrices, but we're allowed to divide by the determinant because the determinant is just a number. We're not going to go through the working in this section of how we calculate the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix because it involves a little bit of time and we already have a previous video which you've hopefully already seen. Um, but just for the sake of um, hurrying along in this video, we'll skip the working and we'll show here the determinant of this matrix A um, is equal to minus 349. If you haven't seen our previous video, you're not sure where that's come from, it's worth going back and uh, watching that as well. But for our purposes here, let's go back to our formula here, the adjoint of A over the determinant of A. We now know the adjoint of A from the first step, um, and we now know the determinant of A, uh, which we said was minus 349. And we are allowed to do this division. It's, it's scalar division. We're just dividing by a number. And the easiest way to do that is simply just to divide every element in this matrix by the number minus 349. Um, so we could write this out like so. And that's acceptable as a result. Some of these fractions might simplify. Um, or we could convert each of these to a decimal as well if preferred. So I hope you found this video useful on how to calculate the inverse of a 2x2 or a 3x3 matrix. And in a later video, we're also going to see how we can use the inverse of a matrix to help us solve complicated systems of equations in engineering as well.